Hey grade 12, sorry I couldn't be there with you today. Um, but at this point we've finished talking about acceleration and derivatives and now we're going to talk about related rates. This is essentially an intro class into related rates because we're only going to talk about rates as they change in specific with shapes. So when we're talking about this, we want to remember a few things first off before we start. In the past, we have talking when we take a derivative, for example, y, we've written either dy dx or y prime. But this y prime, this dy dx, is specifically the derivative of y with respect to x. And again, remember, we have always been talking about, I'm just going to write with respect to here, We've been talking about x as the main term. So x has always been the kind of the key star of everything, the derivative with respect to x. We also talked a little bit about having, when we take the derivative of x, technically we're doing dx dx, which is the derivative of x with respect to x. But remember, we don't really show this dx dx because that just was one. But technically, when we're taking those derivatives with respect to x, we're doing that as well. Today, what we're going to be doing is a whole bunch of derivatives. But in this case, it's not always with respect to x. Our kind of key player or key concept might be the circumference or radius or other variables that we're going to take the derivative with respect to. So it's going to change what our dy dx looks like or what our variables look like. The easiest way is to just start with an example. So it says find the rate of change. So that's going to tell me that I'm talking about taking a derivative. Find how fast something is changing for the area of a square with respect to the side length x. So they're telling me the variable that's the more important one or the one that we're focusing on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little picture. And it's a square and it's x by x. Since in the question they already told me the side length was x, I don't have to introduce a let statement because it's given in the question. So I'm going to come up with an expression for the area because that's what it wants, the rate of change of the area of the square. So the area equals x squared. Now when I take the derivative with respect to the side length x, I'm going to have the derivative of a with respect to x dA dx. On the left-hand side, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then technically dx dx. But like we said before, that's just 1. We don't really need to write that. So the derivative of a, the derivative of the area, the rate of change of the area, with respect to x is 2x. Now, in terms of units, all I have to do is I have to look back at the question. Units on top units on the denominator. So the units for area would be centimeters squared and the units for the side length are centimeters. And notice the question told me that the side length had length of centimeters there. So for your units, if you're ever confused what the rate of change is, just look back to your derivative. It's a word problem, so we'll do a little statement. Therefore, the area of a square changes at a rate of 2x centimeters squared per centimeter with respect to its side length Now a few things that we're going to look at. When we're looking at communication statements, we want the area changing. So what is changing? The area is changing at a rate of this. So that's the other factor we need. So there are three components. What's changing? How fast is it changing? And with respect to what? So the three things for communication, 
what is changing, how fast is it changing, and what is that with respect to? Okay. Let's try another one. Find the rate of change, so take the derivative, for the area of a circle. So that's what I want the rate of change to be with respect to the radius, r, which is given in centimeters. So first off, we start with our area equation for a circle. Area is pi r squared. You're expected to know the area of a circle. I now want to know what is the rate of change of this area, so the derivative of a, but with respect to the radius, the derivative of r. So dA dr is the area rate of change of area of circle with respect to the, ra the radius. And then the derivative of pi r squared is 2 pi r. And like I said, technically, the derivative of r with respect to r, dr dr, but that's just going to be 1. So our final answer, the dA dr, the rate of change of area with respect to the radius, is 2 pi r. I need units. So we look here, area over radius, area is centimeters squared, radius over centimeters. Notice I cannot reduce this. This is not the same as centimeters. Centimeters squared per centimeter, I'm worried. Cannot reduce units. So just be careful on that. Let's make a statement to make sure we include all three things. So what is changing? The area of a circle is changing. At what rate? At a rate of 2 pi r centimeters squared per centimeter with respect to its radius r. Again, all three things that we're looking for. What's changing, the rate it's changing at, and with respect to what variable. So these are related rates. How fast is something changing with respect to another variable? Let's add this in with a few numbers. Find the rate of change of the volume of a cube with respect to its edge length. So we're looking rate of change of volume of a cube with respect to its edge length. And then it says specifically when x equals 4. So if I'm looking at a cube, remember it's like a three-dimensional cube. It's a little sideways, but that's okay. And when I label this, it's x by x. Because it's a cube, it's all the same. So my volume expression is x cubed. I now want the derivative of x with respect to the side length. So the dv dx, the derivative of the volume with respect to the side length, is 3x squared and technically dx dx. But just like in every other example, that cancels out to 1. So I'm left with dv dx, the rate of change of volume with respect to the side length, is 3x squared. And we'll add in our units. Volume is going to be centimeters cubed per centimeter. So notice cubic for volume, regular centimeters on the denominator. And now specifically, when x is 4, we just sub in. I'm going to evaluate. This becomes 3 times 16, which is 48 centimeters cubed per centimeter. So when we go to make our final statement here, we can say the volume of a cube is changing at a rate of 48 centimeters cubed per centimeter with 
with respect to what? Its side length or edge length. Edge length x. And then our extra one, when x equals 4 centimeters. So this had an extra instead of 3 units, there are 4. The volume is changing at a given rate with respect to the edge length. But now our last point, when x equals 4. If it's a specific rate, we need to state what that specific rate is and where that is occurring. Okay, so the first page really gives us an idea of all three of our kind of more basic shapes where we have squares, circles, cubes, and we're finding the derivative with respect to a certain variable. Do you need to go back through those? Please do. Because on the next page, we're going to move on and look at derivatives with a little more complex of equations, one where we might have to rearrange first. So we're going to change this. Find the rate of change instead of the surface area. We're going to make it the volume of a sphere with respect to its radius r when r is 3. So what is the rate of change for the volume of a sphere? I do not expect you to know volume of a sphere. That is something that I will give you. So volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. It's highlighted like that because it's given. Again, I want the derivative of that, the rate of change of volume with respect to the radius, so dv dr. And on the right hand side, the 3 comes down. It's going to cancel with the 3 on the bottom, so it's going to be 4 pi r squared dr dr, which surprise, surprise, cancels to 1. So my dv dr is 4 pi r squared. And then specifically, when r equals 3, this expression becomes 4 pi times 3 squared, which is 9 times 4, which gives me 36 pi. I need units. Volume is centimeters cubed. Oh, in this case, it's not centimeters, it's meters. We check in with the question. So meters cubed per meter. Our final statement. Volume of a sphere changes at a rate 36 pi meters cubed per meter with respect to the radius r when the radius is 3 meters. Our four things the volume of a sphere is changing given the rate with respect to what at what given measurement. So that is a full communication statement there. Our last question is going to lead you into the activity um, that you see below, questions one, two, three, four. So essentially use this one as a reference. for the activity below. We're going to find a rate of change, but in this case I just have to do a little bit more work to find out um, the derivative I'm looking for. So let's get into the question. Find the rate of change for the area of a circle with respect to the circumference when the circumference equals 4 pi. And it's just written a little funny, but it's just 4 pi like that. So first off, what, I, what do I want the derivative of? I want the derivative of area. When I think of the area of the circle, I think of pi r squared. But I cannot take the derivative with respect to the circumference because there is no circumference in this equation. So I also need to think of, given the question, I'm just going to move that up a little bit. 
the circumference is kind of like how long it takes to put a circle around an entire, or string around an entire circle. It is 2 pi r. And it's this equation here that I can rearrange to isolate or to sub into the next equation. So I could say that circumference over 2 pi equals r. Now that I have this expression, I can sub it into my original equation. So that's going to be my second step, is substitution. That's going to leave me with this. Area equals pi, but instead of r, circumference over 2 pi squared. So where I saw r, I'm subbing in the expression c over 2 pi. I simplify this. This leaves me with c squared over pi c squared over 2 pi squared. And I'm just going to simplify that a little bit. So I'm left with c squared over 2 pi. Oh, and I forgot to uh, square the 2 as well. So apologies, that should be a 4. So c squared over 4 pi or 1 over 4 pi times c squared. It's the same thing. So this was our third step here where we simplified. Now that I have an expression for the area, I can now take my derivative. I want the derivative of area with respect to the circumference. So I'm just going to go up here. I can take the derivative now because I have a circumference written in my equation. So the derivative of a with respect to the circumference dA dc would be equal to 2 over 4 pi times c. And then technically we've taken the derivative of c with respect to c. But as we know, that just shows to 1. You do not have to show that step. I can also reduce the 2 and the 4 a little bit. And I'm left with circumference over 2 pi equals dA dc. And the last step I'm going to do now is we're going to sub in when their circumference equals 4 pi. And that came from the question. Remember, I wanted the derivative at a specific rate. So 4 pi over 2 pi, the pi's cancel, and I'm left with 2. I need units. Area is centimeters squared. Circumference is centimeters. You might be like me and run out a little bit of a room, so I'll do our statement on the right-hand side. Therefore, the area of the circle changes at the rate of 2 centimeters squared per centimeter with respect to its circumference. when the circumference equals 4 pi. We make sure we have our four things, the area of the circle changing at a rate with respect to what at a given point in time. So question five is definitely our more challenging one where you have to rearrange first to get the equation that you actually want to derive. So it's in this step here, once I have area is one over 4 pi c squared, that's the point where I know I can now take a derivative and find my, um, my work. Getting to that stage is the more challenging part. So what you're going to try right now is you're going to try four examples in this activity here where you're finding the rate of change with area with respect to a equation that's not necessarily in the um, initial equation. 
So making sure we go through this, these should all be similar to number five. So working through this, this is where we're starting. I would say these questions are probably going to take you about 15 minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer, maybe 20 minutes. So with this, what you're going to do is try one question, then you can scroll to the next page here. Notice I have answers for one, two, three, and four. These answers are available up on your um, Edsby, but they're also on your Google Drive, or obviously since they're in the video, they're here as well. So that's question one, two, that's four, <laughs> and that's three. So making sure you go through those. With full solutions, I would check your answers each time, and then you have a few questions on your Edsby worksheet. There's nothing too major. All right, best of luck.